Good afternoon, our dear students, and today's topic of our gastroenterology course of lectures in internal medicine is chronic pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis is a progressive disabling fibroinflammatory disease of the pancreas of variable clinical course and usually associated with the permanent loss of exocrine and endocrine functions over a period of time. The pancreas is an oblong-shaped organ positioned at the level of tr transpyloric plane. With the, on the tail of the pancreas, uh, it's a retroperitoneal organ located deep within the abdomen and the epigastrium and left the hypochondrium regions. The pancreas is typically divided into five parts. The head, the widest part of the pancreas, it lies within the C shape created by the duodenum and is connected to it by the connective tissue. Alternate process, a projection arising from the lower part of the head and extending medially to lie beneath the body of the pancreas. It lies posterior to the superior mesenteric vessels. Neck located between the head and the body of the pancreas, it overlies the superior mesenteric vessels, which form a groove on its posterior aspect. Body, centrally located, crossing the midline of the human body to lie behind the stomach and to the left of the superior mesenteric vessels. The tail, the left end of the pancreas, which lies within the close proximity to the helium of the spleen. It's contained with a splenorenal ligament with the splenic vessels. This is the only part of the pancreas that is intraperitoneal. The pancreatic duct lands, uh, runs the, or the length of the pancreas and unites the common bile duct. Here the common bile duct, here the pancreatic duct, forming the hepatopancreatic ampoule of water. This structure then opens into the duodenum via the major, major duodenal papilla. Pancreatic physiology consists on 98% from exocrine and only on 2% from endocrine functions. Uh, exocrine function presented by pancreatic acinar cells, which can produce digestive enzymes, which are stored in secretory granules. The pancreatic exocrine secretion is regulated by cephalic, gastric, and intestinal stimuli. As in our cells secrete pancreatic juice made up the enzymes, amylase for carbohydrate digestion, lipase for lipid digestion after bile has uh, emulsified the fat. Protein is a variety of them for protein digestion. Endocrine function. Um, in this function, the major role played by islets of Langergans, clusters of hormone producing cells secreted directly into the circulation, and the endocrine cells of the pancreas secreted beta cells insulin, alpha cells glucagon, and delta cells somatostatin. There are many classifications of chronic pancreatitis currently, but uh, the five of them is used in the clinical practice. The Manchester classification system presented in this table uh, uses imagined modalities and clinical science of the disorder. The degree of severity is mostly influenced by the presence of uh, exocrine or and endocrine sufficiency or the presence of complications, while imagined findings are of the minor importance. The ABC classification recommends similar findings classification system. Different guidelines recommend to use TIGARO classification, uh, which comprises six etiological groups of uh, chronic pancreatitis causes. It can be toxic or metabolic, idiopathic, genetic, autoimmune, recurrent acute pancreatitis, and obstructive group of causes of chronic pancreatitis. The Manning High system is the only one offering a severity index and is used accordingly. So after complex procedure of calculation, the score of between 0 to 25 is obtained and representing the severity of chronic pancreatitis. 
Classical classification of chronic pancreatitis previously includes three major categories of this disorder. Uh, and there are chronic calcifying pancreatitis, which can be divided into alcoholic, nutritional, and hereditary, chronic idiopathic pancreatitis, which can be divided into juvenile and senile, and chronic obstructive pancreatitis. The course of disease can be also mild, moderate, or severe. More severe course, uh, the more uh, exacerbation patient has during the year. The signs of uh, pancreatic insufficiency grows with severity progression, and different um, signs and symptoms as body weight uh, loss, uh, for example, pancreatic diabetes appearance, progressive um, emaciation of the patient is seen. The most common risk factor for chronic pancreatitis is alcohol abuse. With a logarithmic risk increase, also the type of alcohol consumed is irrelevant. Some authors suggest at least 80 grams a day for a period at least six years. Smoking is the most probably an independent risk factor, and since smoking leads to the progression of chronic pancreatitis, all patients should be advised to stop smoking. Genetic factors are also contribute to the chronic uh, pancreatitis development. The most important genetic risk factors are variants in cationic trypsin gene, uh, serine protease inhibitor casal type 1, and carboxypeptidase A1. Further genetic susceptibility genes are cystic fibrosis transmembrane condom so regulator, carboxylipase, etc. Additionally, uh, autoimmune process can lead to the development of the chronic pancreatitis too. Cholecystolytiasis or cholecystolytiasis alone are not considered risk factor for the development of chronic pancreatitis. Protective environmental factors have not been described uh, other than anatomic uh, anomalies such as pancreas division increase. The risk of chronic pancreatitis is still the matter of debate. Obstructive uh, etiology uh, is present, but as a secondary complication rather than the prim primary one. A diagnosis of cystic fibrosis needs to be ruled out in all patients with chronic pancreatitis onset before the age of 20 years, as well as in patients with so-called idiopathic chronic pancreatitis, regardless of the age of the onset. Depending on the etiology, chronic pancreatitis has different disease courses and long-term complications. Epidemiological studies have shown that calcification and exocrine and endocrine sufficiency developed after a short time period in alcoholic chronic pancreatitis patients compared to other etiologies. Also, causal uh, treatment options for the alcoholic chronic pancreatitis are currently not available. Cessation of the alcohol consumption may reduce the rate of progression, decrease pancreatic pain, and partially restore pancreatic exocrine function. In patients with genetic predisposition, the age of the onset is generally early. And exocrine and the crime sufficiency are more prevalent compared to the other etiologies. Patients with inherited chronic pancreatitis seem to have a higher risk of developing pancreatic adenocarcinoma. Most likely, the early onset of the disease in these patients are the, and the longer disease course are, are the main reasons for an increased risk of developing pancreatic cancer. Finally, recent studies have demonstrated that the interaction of different genetic risk factors with each other, or the interaction of the risk factors such as pancreatic division with genetic variation might increase the risk of developing chronic pancreatitis. Chronic pancreatitis is a disease process characterized by irreversible damage of the pancreas as distant from the reversible changes noted in acute pancreatitis. The events that initiate and then perpetuate the inflammatory process in the pancreas are becoming more clearly understood. Irrespective of the mechanism of the injury, it's becoming apparent that stellate cell activation that results in cytokine expression and production of the extracellular matrix protein cause acute and chronic inflammation and collagen deposition in the pancreas.
Thus, the condition is defined by the presence of histologic abnormalities, including chronic inflammation, fibrosis, and progressive destruction of box exocrine and eventually endocrine tissue, which leads to its atrophy. Uh, this disorder is characterized by progressive uh, fibrotic destruction, as we already said, uh, in which the secretory parenchyma is destroyed by the process such as necrosis or apoptosis, or both of them, inflammation and duct obstruction. Increasing evidence indicates that pancreatic stellate cells are the major mediators of fibrosis, resulting in the formation of extracellular matrix in the interstitial spaces and in the areas where resulting uh, in the formation of extracellular matrix where the SNR cells disappear or dark cells are injured. This process ultimately leads to progressive loss of the lobular morphology and structure of the pancreas, bizarre deformation of the large ducts, and severe changes in the arrangement and composition of the islets. The fibrotic destruction of the pancreatic glands is irreversible and the morphological and structural changes leads to functional impairment of both exocrine and endocrine functions and eventually leading to malnutrition and or appearance of the diabetes. The exact pathophysiological mechanism initiating and maintaining the development of fibrosis in the pancreas are poorly still understood, but may be viewed as progression similar to liver fibrosis. The initial injury to one or all of the various tissues compartments or cell types of the pancreas leads to cell necrosis and uh, or apoptosis and consequently release the cytokines growth factors, as for example tumor growth factor B1, interleukin, etc. Either from migrating inflammatory cells, especially macrophages or and nearby pre-existent epithelial and mesenchymal cells. Thereafter, damaged cells are phagocytes by macrophages, causing the release of the cytokines, which in turn causes activation and proliferation of the resident fibroblasts situated in the immediate surroundings of the original site injury, which accordingly induces transformation into myofibroblast cells. Alcohol intake has long been regarded as the primary cause of chronic pancreatitis, but nowadays there is satisfactory indication that the pancreas has the ability to metabolize ethanol via both oxidative and non-oxidative pathways. The effect of ethanol and its metabolites on the subcellular organelles include increased digestive and lysosomal enzyme content, and fatty acid ethyl esters uh, changes. These changes will make the cell more sensitive to the trigger factors and in the presence of appropriate trigger factors where SNL cell injury is initiated. Pancreatic stellate cells activated by cytokines during alcohol-induced necroinflammation or directly by ethanol via its metabolism to acetaldehyde, oh, I'm sorry, acetaldehyde and the subsequent gen generation of oxidant stress. Activated pancreatic uh, stellate cell then increases uh, the synthesis of extracellular matrix proteins leading to pancreatic fibrosis. Autoimmune pancreatitis is the common disorder of presumed autoimmune causation with the characteristic of laboratory histologic and morphological findings. The nomenclature has recently been simplified to include this type of pancreatitis and the idiopathic duct cell centric pancreatitis. In this case, the pancreas is involved in the part of immunoglobulin G4 systemic disease. The characteristic pancreatitic histopathological findings include uh, lymphoplasmacystic infiltrate, storiform fibrosis, and abundant immunoglobulin G4 cells. Histologically confirmed uh, idiopathic duct centric pancreatitis with granulomatocytic inf infiltration of the duct wall, but without uh, of the immunoglobulin G4 positive cells and systemic involvement. It's a disorder limited to the pancreas only. 
the clinical future including immunoglobulin you know, G four associated cholangitis, rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren syndrome, ulcerative colitis, medicinal fibrosis and adenopathy, autoimmune thyroiditis, tubular interstitial nephritis, retroperitoneal fibrosis, chronic periarteria aortitis, uh, uh, chronic sclerosing siladenitis, uh, and Mikulchitz disease. Mild symptoms, usually abdominal pain and recurrent acute pancreatitis, are usual. Furthermore, autoimmune pancreatitis is not the common cause of idiopathic or recurrent pancreatitis. Patients with chronic pancreatitis seek medical attention predominantly because of two symptoms, abdominal pain or maldigestion and weight loss. Clinical is a patient experience intermittent attacks of the severe pain, often in the mid-abdomen or left part abdomen, and occasionally radiating in a band-like fashion or localized to the mid-back. The pain may occur either after meals or independently of meals, but it's not fleeting or transitioned and tends to last at least several hours. Unfortunately, patients often are symptomatic for years before the diagnosis is established. The average time from the onset of the symptoms until the diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis is 62 months. The delay in diagnosis is even longer in people without alcoholism. The enteral history of pain in chronic pancreatitis is highly variable. Most patients experience intermittent attacks of pain and unpredictable intervals, while a minority of patients experience chronic pain. In most patients, pain severity either decreases or resolves after 5 to 25 years. Other system associ uh, symptoms associated with the chronic pancreatitis include diarrhea and weight loss. This may be due to either to fear of eating or due to pancreatic exogenous insufficiency and steatorrhea. Abdominal pain is the most significant symptom and a major clinical challenge in the chronic pancreatitis present up to 90% of the patients and the primary cause of hospitalization. Pancreatic pain is characteristically described as constant, severe, dull epigastric pain is often radiates to the back and typically worsens after high fat meals. Many different pain patterns have been described, ranging from no pain to recurrent episodes of pain and pain free intervals to constant pain with clusters of severe exacerbation. Lesions to intrapancreatic nerves and their impact on the pathogenesis of the pain in this disorder, variant problems uh, due to sustained and increased peripheral nociceptive drive may result in increased responsiveness of the central pain transmitting neurons, pancreatic duct hypertension due to plumbing problems, pain due to complication of the disease is also like to contribute and adverse effects to treatment must be not overlooked as an additional source of pain. Maldigestion is uh, manifested as chronic diarrhea, steatorrhea, weight loss, and fatigue. Patients with chronic abdominal pain may or may not progress to maldigestion and up to 20% of patients will present with symptoms of maldigestion without a history of abdominal pain. Physical findings in these patients are usually unimpressive, so that there is a disparity between the severity of abdominal pain and the physical signs that usually consist of some mild tenderness. During an attack, patients may assume a characteristic position in an attempt to relieve their abdominal pain. They try to lie on the left side, flexing the spine and drawing the knees up to towards the chest. Occasionally, tender fullness or mass may be palpated in the epigastrum, suggesting the presence of pseudocyst or inflammatory mass in the abdomen. Patients with advanced disease exhibit a decreased subcutaneous fat, temporal wasting, sunken supraclavicular fossa, and other physical signs of malnutrition. On palpation of the abdomen, the following pain points and zones are determined in, in the presence of chronic pancreatitis. Shofar zone, here you can see, between the vertical line passing through the navel and the bisector of the angle uh, formed by the vertical and horizontal line passing through the navel. Pain or tenderness in this area is the most typical for the localization of inflammation in the head of the pancreas. 
Gubergrid Skulski area is similar to Shofar zone, uh, but located to the left. Tenderness in this area is characteristic of inflammation in the area of the pancreas body. Desjardin point, located six centimeters above the level, navel along the line connecting the navel with the right armpit. Tenderness in this point is characteristic of the localization of inflammation in the head of the pancreas. Kubern grids or catch point, uh, similar to the point of the Jardin, but located on the left. Tenderness at this point is observed with inflammation of the tail of the pancreas. Mayor Robson point presented as point three on the picture. Here it is, located on the border of the outer and the middle third of the line connecting the navel and the middle of the left costal arch. Tenderness at this point is characteristic of inflammation of the tail of the pancreas. The region of the costal vertebral angle on the left is painful with inflammation of the body and tail of the pancreas, usually. With the long-term courses of pancreatitis, a positive sign of growth is determined. At, it's an atrophy of subcutaneous fatty tissue in the area of the projection of the pancreas into the anterior abdominal wall. Uh, examination may reveal a symptom of the red droplets, the presence of the red spots on the skin of the abdomen, chest, back, as well as brown skin over the pancreas. Gray Turner sign refers the bruising of the flanks, but the part of the body between the last rib and the top of the hip. The bruising appears as a blue discoloration and it's a sign of peritoneal hemorrhage or bleeding behind the peritoneum, which is a uh, lining of the abdominal cavity. Cullen sign as a great type, it's a hemorrhage, uh, appears in case of any uh, complicated chronic pancreatitis or acute pancreatitis. If present, and it's hemorrhagic discoloration of the umbilical area due to intraperitoneal hemorrhage from any cause. One of the more frequent causes is acute hemorrhagic paniculitis. Return SI uh, associated with acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis or chronic pancreatitis complication, as I said. Uh, there are many of diagnostical possibilities to confirm the diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis. <laughs> but all of them can be divided into three main categories. It's a test to establish the diagnosis, test for pancreatic function evaluation, and test for uh, anatomy uh, or pancreatic disposition and anatomy prior to surgery will be uh, planned. Test for establishing the diagnosis, the main ultrasound or ultrasound CT, abdominal X-ray, magnetic resonance uh, cholangiopancreatography or endoscopic cholangiopancreatography, which is, which is the gold standard, or endoscopic ultrasound. They can help to find, to prove that patient has chronic pancreatitis to confirm any um, complication or physical changes of the pancreatic structure. And then we need to test for pancreatic function to prove or disapprove uh, the presence of endocrine or exocrine insufficiency uh, to go support the symptoms of the patient because none of them are as written, uh, you can, uh, can be written in your books. So these tests are a collection of pure pancreatic juice after securitin injection, fecal pancreatic elastase levels, uh, and also evaluation of the amylase lipase levels too. And the best test for anatomy prior to the surgery is endoscopic or magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography, which helps to understand uh, the changes of the uh, body of the pancreas, possible cause of this pancreatitis, and different complications can be found, or uh, which can uh, in future uh, make prognosis of the surgery of this patient and for rehabilitation of this patient worse than it is. 
The diagnosis of early or mild chronic pancreatitis can be challenging because there is no biomarker for the disease. In contrast to acute pancreatitis, the serum amylase and lipase level are usually not strictly elevated in this patient, depending on severity, presence of absence of complication. Elevation of serum, bilirubin, and alkaline phosphatase may indicate cholestasis secondary to common bulk duct stricture caused by chronic inflammation. Many patients have impaired glucose tolerance with elevated fast and blood glucose levels by low concentration of serum trypsin and relatively specific for advanced chronic pancreatitis, they are not sensitive enough to be helpful in the most patient with mild to moderate disease. Laboratory studies to identify causative factors of chronic pancreatitis include serum calcium and triglyceride levels. When common etiologies are not found, research protocols are available to test genetic mutation in cationic trypsinogen. Because mild digestion and malabsorption do not occur until more than 90% of pancreas have been described, destroyed, cetaria is a manifestation of advanced chronic pancreatitis. Nice qualitative, no quantitative fecal fat analysis can detect early disease. Assays of fecal chemotrypsin and human pancreatic stage 1 have the same limitation but are useful in affirming advanced chronic pancreatitis with exocrine insufficiency. This test allows to determine or to rule out pancreatic exocrine insufficiency and its degree. Pancreatic functional tests. There are direct and indirect tests. So direct uh, are more sensitive. It can be used to detect chronic pancreatitis in its early stages. However, they are uh, somewhat invasive, labor, labor intensive and expensive. So the major one is determination of duodenal aspirates and its analysis and the determination of in, in pancreatic juice and its analysis. Indirect tests are non-invasive for pancreatic function and have been developed to detect chronic pancreatitis. In principle, these tests work via oral administration of the complex substances that is uh, hydrolyzed by specific pancreatic enzyme to release a marker substance. And the intestine absorb a marker, which then is measured in the serum or urine. These tests are capable to detect in moderate to severe chronic pancreatitis. The presence of renal, intestinal, and liver disease may interfere with the accuracy of this test. Also, there are respiratory pancreatic tests. Citroglyceride breast test determines pancreatic lipase activity in the lumen of the intestine and can differentiate pancreatic steatorrhea from enteric steatorrhea. Protein breast test with uh, C13 marked egg white reduce the co in case of chronic pancreatitis and lack of trypsin. Amylase breast test um, marked with radio, radio citrin acid marked cornstarch allows uh, to detect deficiency in pancreatic amylase in duodenum and normal in the end of the first hours is from 10 to 30% of amylase is present. NISA currently is freely available. Uh, which test is clinically indicated for diagnosis of endocrine pancreatic insufficiency by the latest guidelines for the treatment of chronic pancreatitis? In clinical settings, a non invasive pancreatic function test should be performed. So, this test is feasible and widely available, and is therefore most frequently used in the setting. While C13 mixed triglyceride breast test offers an alternative. Also, test may be used as an indicator of pancreatic and exocrine insufficiency, but provides only semi quantitative data. Should a pancreatic function test be performed to monitor enzyme treatment? To evaluate the efficiency of the replacement therapy, it's sufficient to, in most causes to verify the normalization of nutritional parameters and symptomatic improvement. When symptoms of exocrine insufficiency persist in spite of adequate adequate uh, functional tests uh, and imaging tests are recommended in order to evaluate treatment efficiency. 
The radiographic evaluation of the patient with suspected chronic pancreatitis usually proceeds from a non-invasive to more invasive approach. Abdominal CT imaging is the initial modality of the choice, followed by MRI, endoscopic ultrasound, and pancreatic function testing. Plain films show calcification due to pancreatic lithiasis in 30% of infected patients. Generally, it manifests with a focal enlargement or mass-like lesions of the pancreas, which is hypoenhancing. It may be associated with the main pancreatic duct in common bile duct dilation when localized at the pancreatic head, but they commonly taper smoothly and are not completely obstructed. Uh, uh, as uh, abrupt cut of in pancreatic adenocarcinoma can be duct penetrating sign. On the picture, you can find uh, the signs of pancreatic lithiasis through all the length of the pancreas from, from the head to the tail uh, seen on plain X ray. The pancreas might appear uh, during ultrasound as atrophic, calcified, or fibrotic, uh, depending on the stage. Findings that may be present on ultrasound include hypoechogenicity, often indicates fibrotic changes can be seen here, hyper, sorry, pseudocystic, pseudoaneurysm appearance, presence of ascites. Ultrasound may also assist to differentiate between uh, the autoimmune and the acquired types. Uh, the pancreas is enlarged as a focal diffusionally in the autoimmune type classification uh, are visible in acquired type. Abdominal ultrasound can only be used to diagnose chronic pancreatitis at advanced stage. In the uh, earlier stages, the changes, structural changes that can be evaluated via ultrasound is not so clearly. Uh, uh, or easily can be interpreted. Okay, CT features of chronic pancreatitis include dilation of the main pancreatic duct, pancreatic calcification, changes in pancreatic size due to atrophy or, or presence or absence of complication assists, etc. Uh, changes in the shape and the contour and pancreatic pseudocyst appearance. Examination uh, by CT is the most appropriate method for identifying pancreatic calcification, while for the very small calcification, only case CT is preferred. However, also CTs can excel as uh, depicting the morphological changes of advanced chronic pancreatitis described above. The subtle abnormalities of early to moderate chronic pancreatitis are beyond its resolution, and normal finding on the stat does not rule out the chronic pancreatitis. CT scan studies are indicated to look for complications of the disease and are useful in planning surgical and endoscopic intervention. The sensitivity and specificity of the CT scanning are up to 95% respectively. Endoscopic or retrograde cholangiopancreatography is the most sensitive imaging study, the gold standard, as I said for chronic pancreatitis and demonstrates irregularities of the pancreatic duct structures, structures, carefully dilated segments and changes in the first and second order branches, the cis formation also. It helps in showing extent of disease and useful for staging. One limitation of this uh, modality is it cannot be used to evaluate the pancreatic parenchyma and histologically prone chronic pancreatitis has been documented in the setting of normal findings of on pancreatogram. So on this picture, you can see a patient with advanced chronic pancreatitis, while advanced you, you can see dilated pancreatic duct in, in presence with uh, some stone in it, and stenosis of the distal bile duct here, but dilated biliar tree, which can be in the cause of problem with Walter Ampilla due to stone obstruction, for example, in patients with chronic pancreatitis. Similar picture of uh, dilation can be seen on this peak also. 
Magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography provides information on the pancreatic parenchyma and adjusts and abdominal viscera, uses heavily T2 weighted in images to visualize the biliary and pancreatic ductal system. The use of secretin during the study enhanced the quality of pancreatogram. Accuracy is improving and relatively this. Uh, imaging and studies is safe, um, reasonably accurate, non-invasive, fast, and very useful. In planning surgical endoscopical intervention can be prescribed in patient with inability to perform endoscopic cholangiopancreatography. For example, if patient has severe stages of chronic heart failure, esophageal structures. Uh, non-controlled uh, reflexes, uh, um, renal failure, or other severe symptomatic disorder, systemic sorry, disorder. Uh, the similar findings you can um, can be found dilation of the uh, pancreatic duct, presence of the stones of pancreatic duct, or, or stricturing of pancreatic duct can be found during this uh, imaging study. In the early stages of chronic pancreatitis, the parenchyma exhibits an increase in connective tissue around the ducts and between the nodules. The degree of inflammation is minimal to moderate, consisting mostly from T lymphocytes and the patchy focal process, and eventually affects the pancreas. Uh, with increasing severity, the connective tissue progresses between the acin, which gradually become distorted and tend to disappear. In advanced disease, fibrous tissue replaces the SNR tissue and the pancreas becomes contracted, small and hard. The isolates of Langergans are relatively spared until very late in the disease process. In uh, chronic calcified pancreatitis, plugs of precipitated protein develop within the ductal system. While they may be observed in all types of chronic pancreatitis in alcoholic and tropical forms, these plugs tend to evolve into calculi by the position of the calcium within them. The calcified pancreatic calculi are distributed irregularly. Uh, with clinical suspicion of disease, this algorithm for uh, definition of disease suggests the concordance of three futures, clinical risk and biomarkers to make diagnosis, and it divides the approach into three levels of investigation named ABC1. Diagnosis is made, then the progressive workup can focus on issues related to the management. So how we can use, depending on... Uh, um, the presence of, or uh, depending on the data of anamnesis, uh, symptoms, uh, and clinical uh, presentation, uh, you can choose as. Let's start from, at first, we're starting from clinical picture. So if patient has pancreatic life pain, old digestion, weight loss, glucose intolerance, and older age, and there is no family history, no evidence of Milbunji disease, and etc., we are moving to the risk uh, TIGARO uh, classification, calculated it, and trying to uh, find the cause. It can be smoking or hypertroglyceridemia or others. If, for example, the cause is alcohol, then we move to the imagining, of, which in this case will be the CT scan or, for example, cholangiography. And here's the present present of the list of investigation that you can, sh you can should uh, uh, prescribe for a patient to prove this to prove possible causes. If patient has not only done pancreatic like pain, but also family history and uh, syndromic futures or early onset of the disease, the next step for us will be the genetic test testing or toxic uh, testing, depending on the possible cause. We um, suggest by the first type clinical features of the pancreatitis. And in this case, if uh, genetic testing is pro proof, our actually um, clinical thoughts, we are moving to imagining and serum markers to prove our uh, etiological suggestion. If not proved, so we move to a, a or C uh, parts and trying to find or maldigestion with loss glucose tolerance. Is it only one present or maybe patient have, for example, 
asteroidal uh, history of use or maybe clinical response to previous treatment is absent or etc. And then we are moving by the C line trying to uh, find, uh, prove our chronic pancreatitis, not only diagnosis, but the geology of the patient to choose the management uh, in case of the C uh, level of investigation, the best investigation for uh, diagnosis confirmation is histology because CT scan or other imaging studies, even with uh, um, biochemical uh, investigation is not enough to prove the causal uh, uh, diagnosis in, for chronic pancreatitis. No curative treatment for chronic pancreatitis exists. Medical therapy is determined primarily by the symptoms. If no anatomic explanation for abdominal pain can be found, medical therapy can be attempted. Uh, this therapy includes pain control with analgesic agents and the trial of non coated pancreatic enzymes. The goals of medical treatment are as follows. Modify behaviors that may exacerbate the natural history of the disease. Enable the pancreas to heal itself. Determine the cause of abdominal pain and evaluate it. Detect pancreatic exocrine efficiency, restore digestion and absorption to normal. Diagnose and treat endocrine in insufficiency. A diet flow in fat and high in protein and carbohydrates is recommended, especially in patients with steatorrhea. The degree of restriction depends on severity of the fat malabsorption. Generally, an intake of 20 grams a day or less is sufficient. Patients who continue to suffer from steatorrhea following fat restriction require medical therapy. Malabsorption of the fat, soluble vitamins and vitamin B12 also cure, oral supplementation of these enzymes is recommended. Total calories uh, by day for this patient should not over helm 100, uh, 1,100 grams, calories, I'm sorry. The second most important point in the management is management of the pain, which is the most frequent symptom. And from the social point of view, patient with uh, chronic pancreatitis who continues to consume alcohol after appropriate patient indication still warrant care and should be encouraged to stop alcohol use by means of the counseling, attendance of alcoholic anonymous, if possible, and the other programs. Uh, urgent interventions should be performed in patients who continue to consume alcohol. In general, elective intervention procedures such as uh, celiac plexus intervention for pain palliation should be performed with caution in patients who are actively consuming alcohol. Patients with chronic pancreatitis often experience pain in the setting of pancreatic duct obstruction. In this case, endoscopic decompressive procedures include endoscopic uh, cholangiopancreatography with pancreatic sphincterotomy, stone clearance, three, the, the elation and pancreatic dextantin. As endoscopic options include interventional procedures that usually involve placement of transluminal stand to help the pancreatic duct decompression in case of the strictures or uh, other, uh, for example, damages of the pancreatic duct. Antioxidant therapy uh, has a benefit in treatment of the pain to the exact mechanism by which uh, these agents could reduce pain is not fully clear. Most therapies propose that these agents reduce oxidative stress and provide an anti-inflammatory effect. If these agents were helpful, they could potentially be used as an alternative to other medication, including narcotics. Opiates may be considered to treat painful chronic pancreatitis only in patients in whom all other reasonable therapeutic options have been exhausted. If a patient is unable to be palliated uh, with uh, other modalities, then opiates are justified for a corrector of pain. Uh, patients who have been previously prescribed opiates for chronic pancreatitis should be encouraged to transition to other medication. The impetus for existing exogenous pancreatic enzymes to reduce pain begins with the hypothesis that stimulation of the pancreas by food causes pain. Cholecystokinin is uh, one of the possible mediators of this response. 
Cholecystokin mineral is in fact typically secreted into the adenum during the indigestive period. Proteolytic enzymes within the pancreatic juice rapidly degrade cholecystokin releasing factor. After a meal, the proteolytic enzymes are occupied by digesting dietary proteins and enough of uh, releasing factor escapes to bind the duodenocytes, which stimulates the release of cholecystokinin, a term stimulating pancreatic secretion. In severe chronic pancreatitis with the chronic insufficiency, cholecystokinin levels may be high because proteolytic enzymes are low. When pancreatic enzyme supplements are administered in high doses, degradation of uh, uh, releasing factor for cholecystokinin is restored and the stimulus for uh, release of cholecystokinin is reduced. Uh, when exogenous pancreatic enzymes are taken with a meal, cholecystokinin releasing factors are degraded and the release of this active substance in response to a meal is reduced, as indicated by the smaller cholecystokinin response. Uh, this decreases pancreatic stimulation and pain. Not all gastroenterologists societies suggest the use of pancreatic enzyme supplementation to improve the pain in the case of chronic pancreatitis. Celiac plexus blockade uh, has management of pain uh, manipulation refers to the injection of pharmaceuticals or and around the region into, I'm sorry, or uh, around the region of the celiac ganglia. Advantages of the plexus blockade uh, include the fact that a single treatment can potentially provide pain reduction or relief for, th for three, three to six months, may reduce or eliminate the need of oral an analgesia and can be performed quickly and repeated as needed. Patients with chronic pancreatitis should have periodic evaluation for malnutrition, including tests for osteoporosis and fat-soluble vitamin deficiency. The treatment of steatorrhea with pancreatic enzymes is straightforward, and so complete correction of steatorrhea is unusual. Enzyme therapy usually brings diarrhea under control and restores absorption of fat to an acceptable level and affects weight gain. The most widely used enzyme preparation is forcing pancreatine. Uh, the preparation contains of the mixture of protease, lipase, and amylase. Pancreatic enzymes uh, supplements improve fat absorption, enhance or reduce steatorrhea, and they may be beneficial effects on the drug absorption too. The patient who are unable to swallow intact capsule may carefully open capsules and content mixed with a small amount of acidic soft food with a pH to, of 4.5 or less, such as Apple sauce uh, or administered with apple sauce via gastrotomy tube with a diameter of 14 French or, lar or larger if needed. If administered orally, the mixture should be swallowed immediately and followed with the water or juice to ensure complete digestion. In case of autoimmune pancreatitis, weight loss from pancreatic atrophy in the onset of diabetes may also occur in patients that smoke and consume alcohol. An obstructive pattern of uh, liver test is common. Um, disproportionately elevated serum, for example, alkaline phosphatase and minimally elevated serum aminotransferases. Elevated serum levels of immunoglobulin G4 provides a marker for disease, particularly in Western population, uh, as elevated in two thirds of the patients with autoimmune pancreatitis. CT scans reveal abnormalities in the majority of the patient and include diffuse enlargement, focal enlargement, and distant enlargement of the head of the pancreas. Endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography or Magnetic resonance cholangio, oh, I'm sorry. Cryptography reveals structures in the bile tract in more than one third of the patient with this disorder. This may include common bile duct strictures, intrahepatic bile duct strictures, or proximal bile duct strictures with accompanying narrowing of the pancreatic portion of the bile duct. This has been termed autoimmune immunoglobulin G4 conjugitis. Characteristic histological findings include extensive uh, lymphoplasmatic infiltrates with a dense fibrosis around the pancreatic duct, as well as lymphoplasmatic infiltration resulting in obliterative phlebitis. And the Mayo Clinic, uh, Mayo Clinic 
His ORT criteria indicate that uh, autoimmune pancreatitis can be diagnosed by the presence of at least one of more of following. First, histology, second, imagining, three, serology, four, other organ involvement, and five is response to glucocorticoid therapy with improvement in pancreatic and extra, extra pancreatic manifestation. Glucocorticosteroids have shown efficiency in alleviating symptoms, decreasing the size of the pancreas, and reversing histopathological features in the patient with autoimmune pancreatitis. Patients may respond dramatically to glucocorticoid therapy within uh, at, from two to four week period. Prednisone is usually administered in an initial dose of 40 mg a day for four weeks, followed by the tape of the, the daily dosage by 5 mg a week uh, based on monitoring of clinical parameters. Relief of symptoms, serial changes in abdominal imagining and improvements in the liver test are parameters to follow. The complications of chronic pancreatitis are, are protein and are listed on the pictures. They are rupture, pseudocyst, and after their formation uh, can be pancreatic ascites, uh, can be pancreatic or pleural fistula, dilated bile duct, portal vein thrombosis, inflammation of the head and tans, obstructed, dilated pancreatic bile duct, splenic vein thrombosis, rupture side branch of the main duct causing the pseudocyst of the pancreas or pinnacles of the pseudoaneurysm, uh, and atrophy of pancreatic parenchyma and isolates. Also, the most patients have impaired glucose tolerance, diabetic ketoacidosis, and diabetic coma are uncommon. Likewise, and organ damage, retinopathy, neuropathy, and nephropathy is also uncommon for the patients. Uh, the crucial difference one can make to tell the difference if is in the longevity of the pain if we compare acute and chronic pancreatitis. Acute pancreatitis starts with a sudden attack of the pain that patterns out after a few hours to days, while chronic pancreatitis remains persistent for months. However, even that symptom might not be as reliable as it seems for acute pancreatitis diagnosis usually begins by looking at one's medical history, physical examination, and the blood test, amylase or lipase, the enzymes in the pancreas. Uh, the blood amylase or lipase will usually be elevated three times from normal level, and that would be a sign of acute pancreatitis. As you remember, for patients with chronic pancreatitis, this level of enzymes can, can be normal or slightly elevated. In some cases, the blood does not elevate, and other measures are taken in diagnosis, such as uh, different type of imaging. Chronic pancreatitis is more difficult to determine initially with the blood test, usually. They are not used to diagnosis, but uh, can find and determine how many pancreatic enzymes are in the blood. So, acute pancreatitis is mostly surgical, oh, it's actually surgical problem, as a chronic one, uh, not complicated, it's a problem of internal medicine. A specialist, uh, despite pain, can be present and can be severe. The, Usual presentation of the pain is uh, not acute, or rather dull, not belt like, or rather it's uh, uh, far or Desjardin zones present in patients with acute pancreatitis. It's a usually belt like pain, acute or, or uh, in the uh, over the navel uh, area. Thank you for your attention, and as usual, if you have any question, you can write it on my email or Telegram uh, channel or uh, under this lecture better in our Facebook page. It can be easily for me to find them. Thank you for your attention and presence during this lecture, and see you uh, during the next uh, lecture.